Hi, Maura. Hi, Amy. Isn't it nice to be here? It, it really is. I'm sort of looking around me and um, it's very strange, isn't it, to be in, in a place that's kind of stripped, stripped back. It's fantastic to see it now and then look forward to what it's going to be like when it's finished. Yeah. It's very exciting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's all the sort of old features and things yeah. are, are quite fascinating, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, it's quite strange to be out anywhere, I think, isn't it, <laughs> at but, the moment? <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, I was just saying this morning when I was heading out, um, I felt like I was going on a massive adventure, you yes, know, yeah. um, to talk to real people yes, in a real place. I know, instead of through a screen for a change. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. How have you been finding? Oh, well, you've been working, haven't you? I've, yeah, I've so. been working, yeah. So, But again, as you say, screen-based. Yeah. Um, so the the contact the virtual contact i have to say is not the same as as being as the real being thing. here yeah. yeah yeah no well i thought maybe i would start off this morning by reading a poem because uh, i like everyone else i suppose i find lockdown really really difficult yeah so i came across this um this thing called acedia um, and it was Thomas Aquinas, I uh, read a quote, and it was described as a sort of heavy sadness that presses down on a man's mind in such a way that no activity pleases him. And it was, a, it was regarded as a sin. It yeah. was uh, something that affected monks. So yeah. I wrote this little poem when I came across that quote, and it's called uh, My First Ten Months as a Monk. <laughs> the Desert Fathers knew it well, their nerves jangled by that noonday devil coming rippling across the sands, relentless as the sun, burning belief from their bones, torpor, no relief in prayer. In dark cloisters, brothers grew sick with it. It crept into their cells, damp, insidious, rendering them listless, anxious, unable to concentrate. In this year of blur, ours are shuffled, disordered, days bleed into weeks, and I am stayed in one long, lousy now. Socially, spatially confined, crisis, boredom, uncertainty, cascading, circling round. My piles of books are left unread. I keep meaning to go outside. Oh, Maura, I think you've really captured the <laughs> essence of, of this, this time period. Yeah, it's, it's uh, that kind of torpor, I think, is a really interesting yeah. thing that yeah. has happened to a lot of people I know. Yeah. yeah. So I've really been enjoying reading your, your uh, debut collection, A Language I Understand. Um, it's really exciting to see it. And it's, uh, I mean, I suppose... Uh, um, just reading through it, there's so many poems about family and memory and um, thinking about the past and how the past influences yeah. you as a person now. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. Would you like to read a poem from it? I, I would. I might actually read um, more of the, the title poem um, from it, um, which obviously is a language I understand. And I think, I think this poem will be kind of captures the message of the of the collection um, and the, obviously you being a creative person yourself too kind of sometimes that um, feeling that you have your own voice and you're trying to be heard as well in, in some way that maybe doesn't always fit in with what other people maybe understand or, yes. or what they're they're saying um, I suppose that's quite relevant at the minute as well for everybody um, so this is the this is the the title um, poem from the the collection a language I understand. On the Lord's day we ate ice cream, after we went in peace. The Sabbath was vanilla pod and tendrils of gold sun, spun like sugar from the glasses stained in temples of our God's almighty cliche. The pews were hard, the cone was soft. Maybe built with brimstone, maybe left in the air too long. It's hard to know in a world of inside outs. With Holy Spirit raised on tongues in a language only he will understand, the rest of us are vessels open to the respite of a day that will be tinged with guilt because we cannot rest. 
Maybe only God can rest in peace for making milky ways and worlds and those who feel both love and guilt deserves a break. Quite often now, I go to pieces on the Sabbath day, the dam of Septico about to burst, to spill my fears into a newborn wake. Take me back to worship my vanilla God, pushed inside the hollow of a comb, raised in a language I understand, spoken with a cold and holy tongue. Beautiful image, really beautiful. A lovely imagery in it, and just that that memory too, as a, a yeah. as a child. And the, I remember pushing the ice cream down into the bottom of yeah, the, yeah. the comb. Yeah, I know. It's funny the the things that stuck with you and I. I was brought up Church of Ireland, so we used to go for a sneaky drive to Donegal Day and go to the cabin um, yeah. for for vanilla ice cream and. I remember the dog sitting in the back of the um, the car, and actually my granny and grand would even buy the, the dog, dog an ice yes. cream. <laughs> it would yeah. get its own cabin ice cream. Yeah. Um, but isn't it funny the kind of memories and even the the things that Maura I think that link you in with the generations and things like that too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And your new collection that um, is coming out soon, um, Bone House. Um, you actually deal quite a lot um, with that yeah. idea as well. Yeah, I mean, I think just what you were saying about the thing, the things you remember, it's really fascinating, the things you remember yeah. and the things you forget and yeah. just those little things that snag in your head and stay with you forever. Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, I started off Bone House, um, it started off, I suppose, being about the relationship between mothers and daughters. Yeah. Um, and it's still that, but it's kind of, it's quite, it's personal as well. Yeah. And of course, uh, about a year and a half ago, I became a granny uh, for yes, the first time. Uh, yeah. So that's been really, um, you know, that's spurred a lot of um, work and thoughts about yeah. um, what comes down the generations and what you inherit. And, um, and I mean, it's an absolute delight. Um, yeah. I love being a grandmother. Is it different more than being a mother? Do you know, it is just people, you know, friends would say to me, oh, you'll love it, you know, and yeah. I was always, well, you know, I'm sure it'll be okay, yeah. it'll be nice. I'm just besotted um, by yeah. her. And uh, it is really different because you've got time, you're not doing the kind of frantic day-to-day -day no. stuff, you've got time. Yeah. And watching now um, her language develop and oh, words yeah. and things like that, it's really brilliant to, to be able to really see exciting, it. Yeah. and I, I love seeing all the wee photos that you you share off as well. It's, yeah. it's just fabulous. Yeah, well, I bought myself. You probably saw some plastic animals recently, cows and sheep and things. So I could, yeah. Yeah. so we could play. You know? yeah. yeah, no, it's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, back to the the collection. It's, um, yes, it's about my relationship with my mother and her relationship yeah. with hers, and kind of through the. Through generations, yeah. really. Yeah. And there's some stunning poems in it, Maura. I mean, some ones I, I could just pick out that, particularly for me, when, when I was reading, um, I Love My Daughter Cuts My Fringe oh, as, yes. as well. Yeah. Um, and your hearing, too, is, is a fantastic poem. Thank you. And I think you can really see the, the connection, the little chain, the links in the chain yeah. between the generations. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's just beautiful as a whole, the, the collection together, I oh, think. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm really looking forward to it yeah. being out in the world. Me too, yeah. yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. 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 So maybe should I read something from oh, that? Oh, yes, please. And, yeah. Well, I thought I'd read this one. Um, um, we went, as a family, we went on holiday to Iceland uh, while my daughter was pregnant. So this, is, this poem is called First Glimpse of Orcas in Faxaflo Bay. We've stood on deck for hours until we've nearly frozen, nearly given up. Our small family, husband, wife, our two grown girls, and our granddaughter swimming in her own warm amniotic ocean. Then a shout goes out. My body begins to tremble. In the very crest, the blessing of their movement upwards, in the curve of their black bodies hung for one moment against the white ice space between sea and sky, I am lifted on their shining backs into a fierce new longing. 
Well, that's stunning, Laura. And that sense, you, you always have this beautiful way of not only connecting kind of the relationships that maybe you have with your loved ones as well, but that sense of nature that I know is, is important to you too. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. No, I mean, I think, um, you know, again, back to your book, thinking about some of the poems in it, that kind of sense of family, I think, is very important for you as well, yeah. isn't it? And the generations, you know, we, it is. I love that poem that you have about your grandfather. I think that's a, a beautiful poem. And, oh, yes. Yeah, and then, you know, down through your mum and yes. down to your son and, you know, yes. all of those connections are really evident in your book as well. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's funny sometimes when you're writing because you don't always realise that, that those connections are there and sometimes they just appear. Um, and sometimes even when you're writing and you were saying about your new collection, sometimes you don't see the whole until it's finished. Yeah. And then you suddenly find the themes that yeah. are that are running through. I think that's really interesting because I know I you know, particularly trying to write over the last year, I don't know about you, but I found it really difficult. Yeah. And I was starting to kind of doubt that the book would ever yeah. be a thing or, or would ever come to fruition. Yeah. And it was only kind of really at the last moment that I started to see the connections yes. and that it felt yeah. uh, that it had some kind of coherence to it. So I think yeah. quite often you're writing blindly and trusting mm. that it, it'll yeah. be something in, it'll in the end. It'll come together, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I think what will be interesting too is even looking at your collection, say 10 years on, put in the context of lockdown, you yeah. know, um, yeah. and people, you know, if they're studying it, looking at it, they'll be saying, I wonder, did that influence that poem? I wonder, you yeah. know, they might start to read into yes. the, the pieces, yep. you know. Yep. Yep. Um, and I suppose you can't help that happening, no. you know, really. Well, I mean, I suppose I haven't, uh, apart from one, once or twice in the book, I haven't really consciously written about yeah. um, the plague, but um, it's definitely, you know, it's there in the background and, and yeah. everything, I yeah. think, isn't it? Sort of. Would you read another one? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I might actually, um, Maura, read if I can find it here, um, the poem about my, my granda. I love it, yeah, I love that poem. Um, this, this was actually inspired by, um, funny we were talking about memories, this was actually inspired by a photograph um, of my, my grandfather um, and myself when I, when I was three, and I was like in like a, probably too big for a buggy, but I was in a buggy. Um, and he was reaching up to pick a flower for me. And it's funny how those things stay in your, your memory. And then I began to wonder, was, was that even a photograph? Because I can't find it now. Was it a memory or did I create that yes. image myself? Yeah. So this, this poem's actually kind of a, about that, almost the blurring as well of the boundaries of what's real or what's tangible and, and what's not. Um, so it's called Bejiba, 1984. Bejiba, 1984, and my granda reaching for the unreachable branch. The flower he is picking is for me, a white peony, open and awake. Fighting through dark leaves to reach a halo of bright flowers, he is heavenward, tiptoed, stretching body through space-time reaching for the Olympus moon. I am buggy bound, curly haired, entitled, observing him, anthropic. If I ask, he would reach into the black, unhook the rings of Saturn to place around my neck. Always he is balancing, spanning the gap, plucking white peonies, promising to love me. That's so, so lovely, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the thing about memory, one of the things that fascinates me about memory is um, I read that when you remember something, you're remembering the last time you remembered it. Ooh. So, you know, you never are actually remembering the no. thing itself, you're remembering. Yeah. And I think at some point, I think particularly when you're writing, it almost doesn't matter whether it's an actual no. memory or not, yeah. it's just, yeah. I, I totally agree with you. And, and I think you quite often write or you try to put yourself into the shoes sometimes of, of other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And suddenly you become almost like a blend with that, that yes. character, that, that person, or maybe some a loved one. Maybe yeah. you start to 
merge with them or yeah. see yourself in them yeah. or them in you? Well, I think that empathy that is part of, of being a writer yeah. is really important, yeah. isn't it? It uh, is, yeah. it is. And I mean, talking about memories, uh, you know, like yourself, I grew up in Bangor, although yes. a lot earlier than, than you were here, but you know, the, this area is so full of memories for me and it is. you know, the streets of Bangor when I was growing up in the 60s. Yeah. and. Um, you know, so I find that place is really important to me in my writing, yes. this whole area. Um, you know, I feel as if I'm, you know, the stories of the area are part of who I am and, exactly. and vice versa, really. And do you, you have the same kind of feeling I, about it? Do, I do. Um, it, it's, it's kind of, I suppose it's like the nature-nurture thing, isn't it, too, as well? Are you part of, you know, the genes of your, your parents or whatever, or are you a product of, your, of the place that, yeah. that you grew up in? Yeah. And, and it does influence you and again that's one of the things I think maybe you see after you write um, and yeah. you have quite a lot more of sort of poems about senses of, of place yes in particular in carnivorous and the the collection that's, that's going to be coming out soon. yeah yeah I thought actually I'd read one from carnivorous because it's just I was thinking about you saying about being um, you know Church of Ireland yes uh, yes yeah. well we were uh, we were Presbyterian <laughs> Um, and I have a little poem here, um, which is a kind of a memory of um, somewhere that probably a lot of people in Bangor will recognise, mm -hmm. Hamilton Road Presbyterian yep. Church, 1964. Because there was God, but also Jesus and the Holy Spirit, it seemed the sermon also had to have three long parts. Three always added up to one exquisite boredom on a Sunday. Stylistically embroidered, a burning bush draped the pulpit, static, only figuratively on fire and definitely not consumed. It was us who would be consumed if we didn't get saved. My hat had elastic under my chin, my gloves were white, I carried a proper handkerchief tucked up my sleeve. After the third hymn, during the let us pray before the sermon, my mother would pan me a boiled sweet to suck taken under cover of bowed head from her handbag and carefully unwrapped so as not to make a thistle. I'd sit quiet and behave myself like a good girl, daydreaming and imagining, swinging hand over hand around the suspended light fittings and landing with a simian flourish among the sopranos in the choir. I love that poem, Laura. <laughs> it, it, it's, just, it's one of my favourite ones out of, out of Carnivorous and I think you've really hit the nail on the head because I remember those. That boredom. <laughs> the sermon. Seemed to go on forever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's funny because you, you do show a, a sort of complex relationship there with um, religion as well and the idea of maybe the spiritual or the supernatural. I have a very complex <laughs> relationship with religion. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so I mean, I think all those childhood influences or what influence you as a writer and oh what, definitely yeah, yeah, yeah definitely but um it's it's kind of i think it's it's the nature of writing that these things these things come in um i yeah i i noticed myself referencing place a, a good bit one of the the poems that I, I would maybe like to read it's not necessarily a a place as in a town but um, it's actually my, my granny's um, kitchen windowsill, um, which I just used to be in awe because I don't have green fingers and she used to make everything grow, everything grew. Um, you know, I don't know what the secret was. It certainly was never passed on to me, but um, this poem I'd like to read you more is the, the Botanist. Here the scene from some botanical lab, you as botanist, your kitchen window sparks our halcyon age, makes glaciers retreat from warmth of new sun spilt on sill. Your busy hands propagate, prune, liberate, digits mossed and soiled. You birth spider plants in black bush tumblers, strange test tube flowers whose name you now forgot were smuggled home from Portugal in 93. This petri dish prepared for last year's amaryllis is moist and ready to infuse with life. Everything in jam jars grows, 
bursts forth. Those once clipped, now more whole since the cut. Oh, how I want to tread the water too, to feel my legs like shoots spread out and stretch my history, tack to turn into a fluid womb. Then ink bled veins touch glass, and it is time to plant. You carry me with those you grew on tissue. Attach us all as brand new beings to the earth. Lovely. Still yes, in awe of that. Yes, place, places, it doesn't have to be a big place, or it it's just those little places in the house that you sit as a child or that you remember. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I keep also um, find myself, I, I don't know about you, but you find yourself in places like gardens, childhood gardens, and um, maybe trips away and um, yeah. beaches and, and places that yeah. maybe seemed in some times when you were younger limitless, you yeah. know, that type of yeah. idea. Yes, yeah, very definitely. It's, it's, it's yeah. a strange, as we said, yeah. memories, a strange yeah. nature. I re remember as a small child in our garden, we had a laburnum tree. Oh. And my mother had us so warned of the laburnum tree that I was really convinced that this tree at some point was going to lift itself from the earth and come <laughs> after me you know because it's so the seeds yeah. are so poisonous yeah. you know I, I was convinced this tree had evil evil intentions Inten yeah. Well, you see, yeah. yeah it's amazing you carry that as well with yeah. you too yeah um so it's been brilliant chatting with it, you and it has you know worked. i just you know re good luck with the the book i'm sure it'll um it'll do really well it's a great thank you a great um publication anyway and it's lovely that looks really good too. Yes, and a lovely yeah. purple. Yes. A lovely, and uh, couldn't go, indigo have been fabulous and um, really supportive. Um, even with all my procrastination, um, okay. you know, can't help myself. I think creative people tend to be. But, yes, um, that's our excuse anyway. Yeah. yeah. And more, um, I can't wait till your, your collection comes out, your new collection. Yeah, um, I, I don't have a copy of it yet, but uh, it should be out around April time. So. It will be in your hands soon. It will be in my <laughs> hands soon, hopefully, yeah. yeah. And yeah. just thanks to Open House for having us today. Absolutely, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, lovely to have a proper outing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the re real Perhaps life. we should go and get ice cream or something, although well, we, we probably... Do aren't allowed to. No, so, yeah. no, we could take it home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>